Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. Okay, we're going to talk about some volatility there. So when we're talking about parity, the personality of the dollar Canada changes significantly. Trading this thing around 1.0250 or even 1.0300 is a whole lot different than, than what we're seeing here at 1.0, 1. 1. you know, quadruple zero. So if you're trying to ask, if you're talking to yourself saying, wait a minute, this, this pair is extremely volatile, how can I take advantage of this volatility and benefit from it while still managing risk? Yahtzee, you got options. Okay, so here's how you do it. If I know what a quiet day is, we just defined what a quiet day is. We'll call it quiet really anywhere from 70 to 40 pips. Take a look at these, these relatively squat candles we see on the dollar Canada. Again, I'm on the spot right now, okay? Take a look at these relatively squat candles. Even though the overall trend is down, whenever you start seeing the day trading in a narrow range, you're going to see the volatility drop Okay, and the longer, the more, the more it does it, the sideways range, uh, typically the more you're going to see the volatility drop, the more the price of the option is going to drop until you finally find a spot where you say, okay, this is my sweet spot. I'm willing to, to hop into the dollar Canada. Uh, the volatility has dropped to a level where I feel it's within that average to low. I can take advantage of buying a put or a call and wait for what has been fairly volatile movement whenever we start testing 1.0. This isn't something we've just done once or twice. We've done it arguably, that's a pretty volatile candle there, as is that one. These three are just ridiculous, right? So we're seeing some, some decent action here in April as 1.0 is being tested. Let me just kind of emphasize 1.0 here. So what's the plan behind 1.0? All right, so here's what I've been doing. I don't, I don't personally feel that the dollar Canada is necessarily going to break parity in the near term. Now, what's, what's near to me this month, okay, I don't really see it breaking in the near term. In fact, there's a lot of movement that's related to this commodity currency, this dollar Canada, out of the crude oil market and out of the uh, lumber market. What we do have coming up shortly is summer. Okay, so kind of hear me out. This is a kind of a mix of anecdotal, being in the market for 20 years, uh, a little bit of cyclical motion out of the crude oil market, and a little bit of just following the trend. Okay, so my trading plans are built upon price action. Okay, but a lot of what we might see here is going to be, going to be affected by movement in crude oil. Okay, let me just show you a shot of crude oil here. Movement in crude oil, as, as, as well as lumber. Okay, there's, there's some, you know, while a majority of your dollar Canada movement is going to be based on what's going on in the dollar index and what's going on in crude oil, there is a little bit of relationship back to, to lumber, for those of you that are curious. So this QM contract, by the way, is E-mini, electronic mini crude oil futures. Some of you might look at the CL. I like treating the QM, which is me. Same price action, okay? So what happens during summer to crude oil? Not every summer, but what happens in summer to crude oil? Let's go back a year. What happens? Could I be setting myself up for another summer where between, say, April and July, here's two years, look at the uptrend in summer, go back another year, Okay, look at the uptrend, May, look at that April, May, June, and July. I've just gone back through, this is what, three, four years? It's not 2007. Let's go back to 2006 and see if my points still hold. What happens between April, May, June, July? The market goes up. Crude oil goes up. Now, when crude oil goes up, let me show you here. I'm going to overlay crude oil with a chart of the dollar Canada. We'll go ahead and make the dollar Canada candlestick as well. 
What I want you to see is, see how they're inverse? I know it's kind of a messy chart right now, but see, this is my crude oil. I'm sorry, this is my um, Dollar Canada in the green and the red heading lower. In fact, let me see if I can't clean this up for you a little bit. But my Dollar Canada is heading lower. Let's go with a black and white. That might help a little bit. How's that? Oh, yeah, there we go. So here's my Dollar Canada in black and white. Here's my crude oil in the green, red, and blue. Inverse, right? What happens when crude oil increases in value? The Canadian dollar itself, the loonie, as it's often known, the loonie actually strengthens against the U.S. dollar, and that results in a downtrend on the chart. Okay, so again, this is black and white is the dollar Canada. When it, when the, when the loonie strengthens against the U.S. dollar, against the greenback, you get a downtrend. If the, if the, I don't know if many of you knew. I don't know. I don't know the percentage is still accurate, but I still believe it's a significant number. Uh, from what I understand, Canada exports some nine percent of the world's crude. They're big players in energy. Okay, it's a big part of their economy. And when the value of crude goes up, that helps in turn the loonie, right? And it helps the loonie gain against the U.S. dollar. So when I mention that I'm not necessarily feeling that we're going to break parity now, how many of you think if we're still in this downtrend on the dollar Canada, we could possibly break May, June, July? Starting to make sense? So I'm using the rhythm, that, that natural uptrend we've been seeing in crude oil. Again, there's no, there's no reason for me to expect it. But if everything has a rhythm, which I, I truly believe, the markets have a rhythm, they have a cycle, uh, is there a good chance that I might see some increase in value in crude oil, which could in turn help the loonie gain against the dollar and push prices of the dollar Canada lower through parity? So here in, in the end of April, even, even beginning of May, might be a little early. Okay, but once we start getting into end of May, June, July, you'll start seeing how that market over the past, we went back to 2006. Every year it did it. Every year you saw prices were higher in May than they were in April, they were higher in June than they were in May, and they were higher in July than they were in June. And August kind of seeing that peak, August ended up being that peak and things sort of falling into fall. So could I see the CDD, now let's jump over to where, where, this is where the rubber meets the road now here, gang. Could I see my CDD dip below 100 in about, oh, I don't know, 30 to 45 days? I don't want to hang on for the craziness of spot in that dollar Canada, in the spot. I don't want to do that. I don't want to hang out for this kind of, this kind of day. But I'll, I'll be much more comfortable doing it with an option. Now, if you're going to buy an option, think about your expiration date. Think about when we actually might break parity. So you might want to give yourself, not you have to give yourself an exceptional amount of time. You might be looking at a, a June or July op expiration. Okay? Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.